Hello YouTube. Welcome back to another episode from the Wilderness Philosopher. I had a request to do a video on maintaining and sharpening knives. Could it be that the easiest way to sharpen a knife and the best way to sharpen a knife is also the cheapest? Stay tuned and we'll take a look at it. So I'm out here in the woods today. <clears throat> it's a beautiful day. There's a chance of rain on and off all day, chance of thunderstorms, but I don't mind. It's fantastic to be out. Spring is in full spring and it's, it's just so tranquil and relaxing to be out in nature. I encourage everybody to do it as much as possible. Get wild to stay sane. I'm 57 years old. And I got my first knife that I carried around with me all the time, probably when I was 9 or 10. Which means I've been sharpening knives for 47 years. I've tried so many methods, and some, there, some of the methods are very good. I've used Arkansas stones was my first. And I've used Japanese whetstones, and I've used Lansky sharpeners. I've used sharpening systems. I've used DC3, DC4 stones. I've used diamond stones. Uh, I've used electric sharpeners, which is a big no-no. Um, and I've even used the ones that have a set angle that you hold in your hand and you scrape it along the, you scrape it along the blade. <clears throat> and finally, just a couple of years ago, maybe less than that, I've, I discovered a way that is absolutely the best for me to get a good sharp edge and maintain a sharp edge and it happens to be extremely cheap and extremely easy so i'm going to get some coffee going and we'll get right into it So I just heard some serious thunder. We may get some we may get some decent weather here. But that's okay, we're gonna go on ahead. I made coffee because uh hey why the heck not? I love coffee. So because coffee. Okay, let's talk about sharpening knives. Need to say there's a difference between sharpening knives and honing knives. Honing a knife is basically maintaining the edge that you already have established. Sharpening a knife is when you need to re-establish the edge and you're going to be a bit more aggressive with whatever method of sharpening you use. Now I've got, I don't know how many knives I have with me. One, two, three, four. Four knives. I'm going to be honing one to show you the method and then we're going to take a look at an old beat up battered knife that's pretty old that I haven't maintained in a long time basically because I don't use it. And we're going to take that and we're going to sharpen it and I'll show you how to get the best edge and how to maintain it. Or at least how I do. There's a lot of people more intelligent than me that have their own methods of sharpening and maintaining knives. But this is what I found in my experience to be the best, easiest, cheapest way. And once you see it, you're going to be surprised at how well it actually sharpens knives in a short amount of time. So 
So here are the things you're going to need. First of all, your knife. This is the knife I use for splitting wood, batoning, uh, any big task that I need to do. And it's sharp. It's already sharp. So this I'm just going to hone to maintain. And then you want to go to a hardware store or Amazon and pick up some cheap sandpaper. It doesn't need to be anything special. The cheaper you can find with various grits. This little box goes from 120 grit up to 3,000. Now the 120, I would say 150, 180, 240, 320, 400, 600, and 800 I use mostly for wood, for wood projects that I do. Um, and the rest of them from, let's say also 800 all the way up to 3,000, I use for sharpening and honing knives. And then what you need to do is cut yourself a block of wood. Any block of wood will be fine. It's important that you have a nice 90 degree angle on it. And I'll show you why in just a bit. So for this, so for this knife, since I'm just maintaining it and I'm just honing it basically because I've used it a little bit, but not very much, not enough to dull it. I'm going with a piece of 3000 grit sandpaper. Um, and what you want to do, this one I've used probably five times already. Uh, typically these packages come with um, either three or four pieces of each grit. This package came with three pieces of each grit. And this piece I've used probably four or five times already. But it's still good. It doesn't go bad for a long time. You just wrap it around the block of wood. And then what you want to do is find your angle. And this is a Scandi grind. Scandi grinds are fairly easy to find the angle because you just lay it flat and you can you can see it. You can see when it's touching and when it's not touching. And then what you want to do is move away from the edge. That sharp corner here permits you to get all the way to the beginning to where the actual sharp edge starts. If you have a rounded piece of wood, you're probably not going to be able to get this little section here just before, just before the steel gets thicker. So, moving away from the edge, find your angle. And I've always said that the angle is the most important thing. You can use a rock, you can use a DC4, you can use any type of sharpening system you want. If you don't have the correct angle, it's not going to be sharp. If you have the correct angle, it almost doesn't matter what you use, because if you can maintain the same correct angle every time, you're going to be able to sharpen it. Flip it over, again find the angle, and move in strokes away from the blade. You do not want to go against the edge with sandpaper. And so what I do, depending on how much work it needs, I'll go 15 or 20 on each side and then I'll reduce it say five strokes less and then five strokes less until I get down to five strokes on each side and then I do five four three two one I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it, just kind of light pressure. I've, I've completely lost count. 
Not too important with this one though because I, I know that it's already sharp. And I'm just kind of polishing the edge, which is what you want to do when you hone a knife. You don't need to reestablish the edge. You just need to maintain it a little bit. So that's five. Five on this side. Four. Sure you get all the way to the tip as well. Go two. And one. What you're actually doing is there's a microscopic burr that forms on the end when you sharpen or when you hone. And what you're doing is you're kind of working that burr back and forth. <clears throat> and that's why you want to continue to diminish the number of strokes. 20, 15, 10, 8, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So there's as little burr as possible. Now this is sharp. This is shaving sharp. But there's one more step I want, I would like to do. Okay, so then Take the belt. The belt that you're wearing is fine, as long as it's a leather belt. And this is called stropping. Now the idea with stropping is to further remove the microscopic burr that's there. Uh, and you don't want to go with the same angle of the blade. You want to go a bit steeper. Because it's not removing metal per se. I guess it is in a very, 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 very microscopic way and what I typically do is go back and forth 50 times you do not want to put compound on a leather strap with this method and especially with the Scandi grind the reason being is if you do you're basically doing the same work as the sandpaper as your stone but you're going to end up putting a secondary bevel on it and it's going to ruin the scandy the scandy right because you're going to be re removing too much metal because you're not maintaining the same angle you're going to be removing too much metal and it's going to put a secondary bevel on it which you do not want so i just go back and forth 50 times again i've lost count because i'm talking But you get the idea. Now let me show you how sharp this is. I'm going to have to take off my jacket. Okay, remember this is a quarter inch thick blade. And some people say if with a quarter inch thick blade you can't get it very sharp. Not sharp enough to do uh, feather sticks. Not sharp enough to do fine work. Take a look at this. This is plenty sharp, plenty sharp to do just about anything you want to do. So it's not a small blade, so, so for really fine work you're really not going to want to use it, <clears throat> but it's certainly sharp enough, the edges. Okay, so now let's take a look at a knife that is not sharp, and we'll take it from being <laughs> really kind of abused to being shaving sharp. Okay, so this is an old Spartan Blades Nix that I've had for, <clears throat> excuse me, I've had for, I don't know, 10 or 12 years. And I've abused it. Uh, I haven't taken care of it the way I should, basically because I don't use it. 
Uh, they don't make this anymore, which is a pity because it's an absolutely fantastic knife. Not so much for bushcraft, but just a general purpose knife. It's really a beauty. So now, because it's dull, we're going to go, we're probably going to start out with um, a thousand grit paper. Maybe even 800. Oh, probably a thousand. Changed my mind again. We're going to go with 800. There we go. 800 grit. By the way, this, this paper is wet or dry. So you can, if you want to use um, water, which will help displace some of the uh, very, very fine metal shavings, you can do that. Uh, I don't find it necessary. It's just an extra step, an extra mess, so to speak. I'm out in the middle of the woods with some, some sandpaper and a piece of wood, and I'm able to get my knives shaving sharp. Uh, with very little time and absolutely no mess, no oil, no water. So I really, really recommend this, this method. So now with a, with a knife that doesn't have a Scandi grind, it's a bit more difficult to find the edge. And it will help if you really wrap this tight so that you have a flat, flat, surface that's not bowed but anyway let me, let me just do it one more time here okay so that's that's flat lay your blade against there and eyeball it as best you can and I have to say again moving away from the blade I have to say that when you're using a, a rougher grit, a lower number of grit, it's more difficult to find the edge. But just by just by watching, you can get a good idea where the edge is. And then you'll feel it become smoother as it, and as you get to the higher grits, it's a little bit difficult to describe, but you follow the smoothness. If you feel it being rough in an area, it's probably because your angle's a little bit off. But this is an easy way to maintain your angle. Your hands are always in the same position. They're basically locked. And you just keep going back and forth. Back and forth meaning from one side to the next. many times that was so you'll have to forgive me but I try to do it always evenly Five. 
let me mention also that if you if you're having difficulty finding the edge you can always take a, a magic marker and just put little lines little lines along the sharpened edge and then when you pass when you pass over it you can see if you're removing the marker or not and you can keep doing that as often as you need to. I find that after a while you get the feel of it and you can tell if you're on the edge or not. So this was 800. From 800, I'm going to go to 1200, and then from 1200 to 2000, uh, from 2000 to 2500, probably. I'm not going to make you watch all of it. So moving on to 1200 grit. said before when you get to the higher the higher numbers of grit <clears throat> the finer paper you can follow the smooth you'll understand when you do it but if I go if I have the wrong angle I'm going to feel that it's rough Again, also with stropping, you don't want to go against the edge. You always want to go away from it. At a steeper inclination than what you used, what you did with the sandpaper, or if you use a stone with the stone. Honestly, in all of my life of sharpening knives, I've not been able to get the same sharpness with any other method as I have using this method. So I highly recommend it for everybody. Okay, shall we take shall we do the test? I don't want to cut my skin. I don't know if you were able to see that or not.
<laughs> Maybe I need to put it on something black there. Maybe you can see it. Let's try just a little bit more. Put it on black. Okay. Now, there's one more thing that you need to do with every knife. Always, always, always. Every time you go out in the bush, when you come home, there's something you need to do that's extremely important. Whether it's high carbon, whether it's stainless, mm, ceramic, not important. But if it's any type of metal or steel, this you need to do. You need to put a light coat of oil on it. There's, there's oil in here. There's not very much left. I have another bottle at home. It's no problem. Uh, there are some different philosophies and ideas about which oil is best to use. It's important that you put an oil on it. I found this brand, Ballastol, is very good because it's also known to be food safe, whereas WD-40 or something like that is not. And I use my knives for preparing food when I'm out in the bush. So Ballastol works very well for me. It's um, typically an oil that's used in tooling and machinery. Put a little bit on there. And give yourself a nice coat of oil. It also, you'll find that it cleans. It cleans the blade as well, pretty well. So if you've got some, some marks on there from tree bark or something else, it's going to do a, a good job of, of cleaning it. And there you go. I can, uh, an extremely sharp knife, shaving sharp. And I spent, what did I, I used uh, one, two, three, four different grits of sandpaper for a period of about between 10 and 15 minutes is all. Um, and I got it from not sharp enough to do really anything to shaving sharp. So try it. You'll like it. And when somebody asks you, how the heck do you get your knives so frickin' sharp? You can say the wilderness philosopher showed me how. So now I'm going to sit back, kick back, relax, wait for the storm to roll in, see if I can have a little bit of dramatic weather here and just enjoy my day out in the woods. I hope all of you get the opportunity to get out. The fresh air, the freedom of the wilderness is something amazing. So God bless, and we'll see you next time.